Last time on the PEI bed channel, I showed you an energetic branded bed that I purchased and tried out and I found it worked really well on both sides. Some of you though, who already have PEI beds raised an issue. One side is plain steel, except it's not. Or is it? Well, let's dig a bit deeper. See, the issue is that when you buy a PEI bed normally, well, I guess this is the first issue. Everyone buys their own PEI bed and they talk about it, but there's not much out there in terms of consensus as to what a PEI bed is. PEI, as I previously mentioned, is a coating of a thermoplastic. You can buy this as a sticker or a film that you apply yourself. You can buy it as a pre-applied sticker or you can buy it as what looks like a sticker that someone else has done for you. And this option seems to be the most common or very common. And finally, I think this is a newer um, option, is you can buy beds that are thinner and seem to have been coated in a different manner. To settle this though, or at least to get some more answers, I bought a new PEI bed. Yes, spending more money on a thing that I don't need is how I solve problems. Anyway, I bought this bed because it looked like it was the pre-applied single-sided sticker type that I just mentioned, and luckily I was right, this is what arrived. As you can see here, it does have the sticker on it, which is thicker than the bed in the last video, it's a lot thicker. I guess it has to be to apply it, I don't know what whether it's done by hand in the factory or by machine, but either way it has a notable thickness, and it's totally smooth, but it's clearly a plastic sheet. And most importantly, it's clearly been applied to a plain stainless steel silver bed, which is totally different to the bed in the last video, as I show you them side by side. The energetic branded bed is thinner and has no such sticker. I have spoken to people in the know and they think that the energetic bed was possibly manufactured through a electrostatic coating process where the plastic is coated as a dry powder and then baked on afterwards. I should say I did email Energetic for comment but they didn't reply. If they do reply I'll obviously feed it back but in the absence of any answer this is my best guess. I think the holes in the little tab at the end is probably a bit of a hint as well as to the manufacturing process. Anyway this coating is thinner and it's pretty much invisible in any way other than just the colour that it imparts upon the steel. I should say that the rough surface is actually a powder coat layer and this is entirely separate to the steel or the PEI plastic. It's presumably silica or something, it looks a bit like the same process as you make sandpaper. It's essentially not part of the discussion though, as I wouldn't have a clue what it is or how they put it on, although there are some hints that it's sprayed on. The contentious point though is the reverse side of the sheet as I mentioned. Of course I'm aware that it's possible to treat steel to turn it this sort of straw colour, that is a treatment that you can do based on temperature. I am aware of that, but to preempt that argument, I also scratched an inconspicuous area of the plate where the tab is, and without much effort I found a steel colour underneath. So I would say this is pretty compelling evidence here that this bed is coated both sides. I think if I were to guess, it's coated both sides as a result of the manufacturing method rather than being done on purpose. I would definitely concede that it's probably not intended that you use the reverse side, but my retort to that is so what? If it works, I'm going to use it. So that kind of clears up that a little bit, but there's a couple of outstanding things that I want to cover before I wind up this episode, hopefully for good, unless I have to do a part three if some more stuff arises. I mean, that's fine, I will. But firstly, I'm guessing you probably would be interested in finding out which of these two beds is better. I'm going to be quite brutal here. The energetic bed works way better for me. Both sides of it stick better for me than the new one does, even on its intended side. Sure, the new one works, and if you didn't have both of them side by side to compare, you probably wouldn't be able to see how much better the energetic one was, and you'd be happy with it. But I have been testing both of these beds with the print-in-place engine models from Sunshine, that's linked below, and these models do often fail for me. I figure there's no use having a bed adhesion torture test if it doesn't ever fail. So this is a model that I use on purpose because it almost always fails. But it allows me to push the bed adhesion to its absolute limit and see just exactly how good a bed is. And I had a lot more bits of the print breaking off with the applied film bed than with the original one that I had in the last episode, the energetic one. It's also worth mentioning that based on my very limited interaction with these beds, but also with other bed types. You can easily get snobby about the surface of a bed, but a textured surface, on average, will perform more reliably than a smooth one. 
I said on average because literally that's what I think is going on. If you look at this diagram, a smooth bed not only has a much lower area of contact with the part, but if you also imagine at a closer view, the average level of the textured bed could be seen as halfway between the top and bottom of the textured layer. So you have the luxury of being able to be inaccurate with your first layer and still get good contact with the surface. This is just a theory, of course, and I should probably look at this under a microscope at some point, but let me know what you think about that idea. I can say that I had much more reliable first layer results and less mistakes with leveling on the textured side during the test, so I would definitely recommend the textured PEI bed if you have a choice. The last point, well, what if the back side of the bed is an oddly coloured plain steel? I thoroughly cleaned the new bed steel side and I tried a few attempts at printing on it. Why am I doing this? Well, this answers the question about whether, if it was steel, can you actually print PLA directly onto steel? It seems like the answer is... kind of? It sticks, but I would not say it sticks consistently. If this was the only surface that you had, you could print on it, and I think if you sanded it, you might get better results. Of course, you could add glue stick, you know, that's not the point. The point is, models like this with lots of small areas, it just doesn't stick well enough to use. So anyway, congratulations if you made it this far. Remember to comment and stuff, and I will see you next time.